I'm Sam Haskell, Chairman of the Board for Miss America Organization. It's great to see you all again. We're thrilled to be back in Las Vegas at the Planet Hollywood Resort and Casino for our 91st Miss America pageant. We're thrilled with the young ladies we have. I, I usually have different terminology for different groups of contestants. This is my seventh year in this position, and um, I always say that the girls have a little more of this, a little more of that. This year's contestants are the smartest and most talented, I think, that we've ever had. And our judges have a very, very difficult task ahead of them in selecting Miss America 2012. Miss America 2011, Teresa Scanlon from Nebraska, has been an incredible Miss America. She has done a wonderful job, not only working with our national platform partner, Children's Miracle Network, but in working with all of our sponsors and all of our locals and state organizations as she has traveled over 350,000 miles this year. She has been home probably three weeks in the 52 weeks of the past year. And she is, at age 18, the youngest Miss America we have had since age restrictions were applied in 1935. So Teresa Scanlon deserves as much of your love and support and appreciation as you can give her. And if you see her this week, be sure and thank her for her year of service. Now to introduce you to the group of people who will be selecting her successor. And as we always say, we will open this up for questions after they're introduced, but we want the questions restricted to just the Miss America pageant. Okay? So here we go. I've said this in the past, I'll say it again today. I, I don't really need these. In, in Hollywood, this would be referred to as a prop, but um, my wife thinks I'm cute in them, so. Our first judge is Mr. Mark Ballas. Mark is a lifelong dancer and musician and has wowed viewers on ABC's Dancing with the Stars for nine seasons, winning the first place Mirrorball Trophy twice. Mark's debut solo album, Hurt Love Box, was released by Hit Play Records. Sony Red, his first single, Hot Wire, won Best Freshman Video on MTV and has been put in rotation, airing on that network. He's also been nominated for three Emmy Awards. Mark Ballas. Raul Di Molina is the multiple Emmy Award winning co-host of Univision Network's number one rated entertainment news show, El Gordo y la Flaca, which has more viewers in its time slot than ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox combined. He is the author of the best-selling La Dieta del Gordo and one of the original contributors to the Huffington Post Food and Latino Voices section. Raul continues to write regular newspaper columns. Raul Di Molina. Mike Fleiss. Mike is the founder of Next Entertainment and executive producer of The Bachelor franchise. Our host Chris Harrison hosts that for him, which also includes The Bachelorette and Bachelor Pad. With a multiple year deal with Warner Horizon Television to create original series for network syndication and cable, Mike is a leading producer of reality programming. He has created over three dozen series and produced over 300 hours of primetime television. In addition to his work in TV, he co-directed the documentary God Bless Ozzy Osbourne and received a Best New Director nomination for that. Mike shares a producing credit on the upcoming feature Shark Night 3D. He has authored Sports with an Attitude, the world's most irreverent sports quiz book, and Showbiz with an Attitude, the world's most irreverent entertainment quiz book. Mike Blythe. Chris Jenner, my old buddy. She's the star, creator, and executive producer, along with Ryan Seacrest, of Keeping Up with Kardashians for E. She also produces Courtney and Chloe Take Miami, Courtney and Kim Take New York, and Chloe and Lamar. She is the author of her memoir, Chris Jenner and All Things Kardashian, and is the president of her own production company, Jenner Communications. Chris manages the careers of her six children and her husband, Olympic gold medalist Bruce Jenner. She also owns and operates numerous businesses, including Perfect Skin and Quick Trim, and develops many successful brands for her daughters, such as the Kim Kardashian Fragrance, Unbreakable by Chloe and Lamar, and a global lifestyle line for Sears. Kim and Chris are the spokespersons for Skechers Shape Ups, and Chris and all her daughters have their own line of nail polish for Nicole by OPA called Kardashian Color. Welcome, Chris Jenner. Thank you. The beautiful Terry Polo currently stars as Teresa Hayden Keene on ABC's series Man Up, but is best known for her role as Pam in the Meet the Parents theatricals. 
She recently starred in The Little Fockers, the third installment of that movie franchise, and has completed production on Beyond to be released in 2012. Currently, she's shooting the Lifetime movie Jane Story, which will air in early 2012. Terry Polo. I don't know if you were at the preliminaries last night, but uh, our next judge is not only a great guy, but a terrific athlete. Chris Powell is the host and transformation specialist on ABC's Extreme Makeover Weight Loss Edition, and he can jump flat-footed from the floor to the stage, which debuted last May as the number one show on television. Returning for season two this spring, Chris will again travel the country where he uses his innovative techniques, education, and expertise to guide extremely overweight individuals as they shed hundreds of pounds over the course of one year. Chris exploded onto the fitness scene with his unorthodox approach, becoming a pioneer for a new hybrid of fitness professionals. He has captured national attention with the largest and fastest natural weight loss ever documented, transforming the life of David Smith who lost 401 pounds in 26 months. This month, Chris released his first book entitled Choose to Lose. Chris Powell. <laughs> and finally, our head judge, who I have named the Hall Monitor. Laura, Sp Laura Spencer is the lifestyle anchor for Good Morning America on ABC. She previously hosted The Insider for seven seasons, interviewing the industry's biggest stars and traveling the world for exclusive interviews. She has also hosted three primetime TV specials for CBS and was the host of PBS's Antiques Roadshow. Lara authored her upcoming book, I Break for Yard Sales, which will be out in April of this year from Abrams Books. She also created and executive produces two home and garden television shows. Lara Spencer. Okay, we're going to start the questions. We'll start by raising hands. I'll call on you. You'll announce. Robin Leach is always first. You'll announce who you would like to ask the question to and then proceed. Okay, Robin, you're on deck. So, um, a nice question. Robin, I'm so sorry. We were warned. We were warned about you, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> we should have been warned about your dress last night. Or lack thereof. Reflect for a moment, sir. Seven years of coming from our greatest. And, and I sense with this year's kind of a seat change in terms of not only the contestants, but also the buzz of that. such an answer. I believe that uh, perseverance is what we're all about. And I believe that what we started seven years ago in making Miss America more relevant is an ongoing process. And I believe that our time away from Atlantic City and here in Las Vegas, bringing Miss America into the new millennium has been a really, really difficult task. It is an ongoing task, but it is a task that we are embracing and it is a journey that we're going to be victorious in. And as we take these baby steps, we always move forward. We never take a step and fall back. We always move forward. And I believe in the last seven years, every single step we've taken has moved this organization forward. And just like all the hundreds of thousands of volunteers all over this country, it is in my heart to rebrand Miss America and make her just as vital today as she was 91 years ago. And I'd really love to introduce one of our former Miss Americas who's here, Donna Axel Whitworth, who's sitting right over here. She was Miss America in 1964. And her year of service did not end when she gave up her crown to Miss America in 1965. She has volunteered her time and her energy and her love and her passion to this organization for almost 50 years. And even now, she is the judge's champ for the Miss America organization. So I believe that each step we take moves us one step further to where we always want to be, which is ahead of the curve and always looking forward. So thank you for the nice question. <laughs> this is on the ABC network. And Lara has become a head job. So was that controversy? Maybe Lara, you want to answer. Was there controversy about me becoming head judge? I think you need to ask Chris Jenner, who's still not over it. I wanted to be head judge, and Lara won. And I still 
trying to get t-shirts printed, but it's, it's, it's not really a contest. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm making it one. <laughs> and I'm that sure a reality, reality show, if you could. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that was a secret. That was a secret. So you see, there's no controversy at all. No. <laughs> In fighting. It took Chris to, to, to tear them off. Yes. Yeah. 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 But it has, it has yeah. nothing to do with our network. We chose Lara because we felt like she would have a strong, strong <laughs> fist in terms of keeping everyone in line. <laughs> and she does. That's all you got, Robin? That's all you got? We got Mike from ABC. We got Tom from ABC. I'm from E. We know. Oh. We know. <laughs> Robin, no one ever accused me of being dumb. <laughs> right here. Good morning. Uh, my name is Brooke Plumba. I'm with TMD Pageant Network. Um, I have a question for Mike Flights. As a former contestant myself, I spent a lot of time with spelling myths about what Miss America really is and comparing and explaining to people the difference between Miss USA and Miss America and what goes into it. What was some of the preconceived notions that you had coming into this and how they changed on the involved in the MC? Well, I thought it was just going to take one day. I thought it was going to take one some girls, check some boxes, and walk out. Excuse me. I'm sorry. It, it's not that at all. Uh, I mean, we really spent a lot of time with the girls. We really got to know them. And I mean, they're, they're multi dimensional, accomplished young women. And I think that's the difference between this pageant and the other pageants out there. It's like this is it's about scholarships, it's about community service, it's about you know, well rounded, you know, outstanding young American girls. Next question, right here. I'll get you in a minute. Mike, Mike, this is for Chris. Uh, you and your girls spend a lot of time giving beauty secrets and tips to a lot of young women in America. Uh, this is kind of your feel about uh, this American pageant. What is the one thing you look for? How tough will your, your judgment be based on all the tips you give? Well, what surprises me is how these girls and uh, the work ethic that they all seem to have is really remarkable. And that's what's impressed me a lot. I think that they all look at this as a job and not just a beauty pageant, which is so impressive. And I think that that's one thing I try to instill in my girls and young women who do ask us about health and beauty and, you know, style and fashion is, you know, what's what else is involved in all of that. And I think these girls are, are really well-rounded. I have learned the best beauty tip I've ever heard in my whole life here this week, and that's that these girls use butt glue with their <laughs> bikinis to keep them from slipping. And that was, I think, we had so much fun yesterday at interviews and these little butt glue tips. So I don't know. I'm going to have to take that home and maybe t tell my girls about it. Didn't we find out, Chris, that, that Elmer's glue worked better than butt glue? That's right. We did all find that out? Uh, yes. Interesting fact. Thank yeah. you, yeah. Miss California. <laughs> 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 we have a question. We have a question right back here, and then I'll be over to this side. And then have butts too. <laughs> okay, your question is for. My question is for Terry. It's my understanding that your mother was a runner-up to Miss Delaware, as I understand it. What was her response when you heard about uh, you judging the She was thrilled. She was Miss Dover, um, and we're still we're still debating uh, whether it was 1961 or 1962. We're not quite sure. Um, and then she was runner-up to Miss Delaware. Um, she was absolutely thrilled. I, I, I confess that also when I when I was asked to do this, um, I had some preconceived notions and, and um, ideas about it, and I, I questioned it. Um, and but then when I spoke with my mother, she was thrilled, and she says, "Oh my goodness, you're gonna have so much fun. You get to know these girls, you interview them, you spend time with them, you uh, you get to know who they are." And 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 that kind of changed my perception a little bit. So therefore, I called Rick Brinkley and I said, "Brick, you gotta tell me what what's what's the what's the the lowdown here. I, I really want to know what I'm getting myself into." And when he went on to explain things to me. Um, in regards to the second, she's Miss America is crowned. She walks off the stage, is whisked away to a press conference, and from that press conference, she goes on a 365-day whirlwind tour, never going home. She's got two suitcases, and she has a traveling companion with her. Um, I, I thought I couldn't handle that at 42. I don't know how someone at their tender ages could could do such. Um, so my mom really supported the idea, so I went back and I said, absolutely, let's do this. And being here this week, my favorite part of this whole week has been meeting the girls. It was, it was a, a really long 
day, uh, a couple of days, to sit in a room and interview each one individually for 10 minutes. Um, but that was my favorite part because I just, to, to see the genuine, the, the, the outstanding qualities that these women have are, if I had one ounce of that when I was their age, I would be ruler of the free world, the universe right now, let me tell you. Um, I don't know if I have an ounce of that at, at 42. So it's really been an absolute honor to see these ladies and meet them. And um, so I thank my mom for, for encouraging me and saying, uh, do that. Hi, yeah. my question is for Chris. Um, as a mother of five, five gorgeous girls, right, as we, um, who come in all different shapes and sizes, and I know that they've shared some public body image struggles, I was just wondering how um, you look at the lifestyle of fitness and social media competition and whether or not you would be judged. Well, I think that, you know, definitely. Um, I look for somebody who just looks really healthy and fit and looks like they do take care of themselves. And, you know, the truth is we're in this environment here this week with a lot of beautiful young women, 53 beautiful young women who have worked very hard to get to where they are and they take this competition very seriously. But what I've realized and talked to all of them, like Terry mentioned, is that they've really done it in such a healthy way. They've talked about their workout routines and how they, some of them have brought on personal trainers and nutritionists and they're very involved and interested in what is going into their body. And that really shows on what they look like on the outside. You can tell by their skin. And last night we saw the swimsuit competition and these are gorgeous girls who, you know, are very confident. And um, some of them didn't start out that way. I think that when you do things that are extreme, extreme weight loss, extreme, you know, eating disorders, anything like that, it can cause you to have a really bad, you know, feeling about yourself, really low self-esteem. And I feel like these girls felt really good about themselves. And that was like really exciting to see because I came into this thinking, wow, you know, I said to a couple of them, well, how, you know, what do you do the week before a swimsuit competition? And what do you do right after? And I expected them all to say, eat a cheeseburger, because that's what I would do. <laughs> and they all said, oh my gosh, no, we get, you know, we're, this is our lifestyle. So they've adapted this lifestyle to, to fit their, you know, their goals, and this is their goal. Right here, Katie Stam, another former Miss America snuck on. Oh, no, but, uh, I know, I apologize for being late. I had to do quality of life interviews this morning. We um, love Katie Stam. We um, love Katie Stam. Uh, just first of all, as a former Miss America, I just wanted to thank you so much for investing your time. As judges, we love this organization. We live, we breathe, we sleep this organization. And we just thank you so much for your time investing in it in us and in these amazing young women you've gotten to meet over the last couple of days. My question is, I want to go down the line, starting here with Laura, and just give us some of the top qualities that you're looking for in your next Miss America. Uh, not necessarily from a judge's perspective, but just as part of the American people with who you want, what you want in your representative. I want her to be modern. I want her to represent the women that Miss America you know, is trying to attract and, you know, we want Miss America to be a role model and so she should be hip, she should be fun, she should absolutely be smart and poised and uh, talented and being beautiful doesn't hurt, but, uh, but she should also reflect society today and, and you know, I, I think that that's, that's where we're going is we're making it a little more modern. That's what I'm looking for. When those girls are on the stage, I, I just want to mess up their hair a little bit. <laughs> Lara's very passionate about this, by the way. I don't know if you notice her tearing up. She's, yeah. she's been crying for the last couple of days. It's just it's <laughs> heartfelt, heartfelt from love. <laughs> well, like, like Lara said, she, she does need to be hip. She needs to be confident. I'm looking for, for poise. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a girl who also embodies healthy face. I mean, this is this is definitely my specialty because she is going to be a role model. But at the same time, she has to be so fun, so relatable to that younger audience. I mean, we're we're targeting the 17 to 24 demographic, and and because this is the girl that they're all going to be looking up to, and so we want them to be like her. So that's uh, that's really what I'm looking for. Is is you know I've got a five year old daughter, and I know she's on her way to 17 here. Sooner than yeah, I know it. I, 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 none of us want to see a 18 to 24 year old who 
act like a 35 to 40 year old. You know, we want we want them to have fun with it. We know how passionate they are, but it's I love that sparkle in their eye when you can tell they're also really just they're in the moment, yeah. and we've seen that. And I, I'm looking for a, a woman who my daughter can look up to. First and foremost, I'm looking for a woman that does you. Chew gum out of crush gum. <laughs> <laughs> um, second of all, I would uh, um, uh, the uh, I'm looking for someone who's absolutely genuine, just genuine, real, not someone. There are things that must be rehearsed, absolutely, um, but you know pretty much from the second they open their mouths that this person is relatable. This person is every woman, America. And it's, it's, it's breathtaking when you see someone who opens her mouth and talks to you as if she's really talking to you and she really cares about, about you listening and about answering your question and being true to herself and who she really is and presenting that as opposed to anything else, any other trappings. And that, we've seen a couple of those and it's just, it's breathtaking and lovely and it's an honor to meet those girls. Well, um, ditto to everything those three just said, for sure. <laughs> but I think also this is a much different game than it was years ago with social media and the internet and everything that these girls have to deal with these days from Twitter to Facebook to, you know, it's, they can really touch many, many more young women around the world and around the country, but around the world as well as an example of Miss America than ever before. And I think that's something that that young woman that I'm looking for has to also be in touch with pop culture and what's going on today and you know all the current events and politics and all the things that we've been talking to these women about, but they're so smart about it and each and every one of them, as I said before, has such an amazing work ethic. And I think that that combined with all the other qualities is something that being so well-rounded and being able to handle the stress that this will certainly, you know, pound upon them 365 days on the on the road in a row. It kind of sounds like my schedule, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's what we're looking for: somebody who can handle it all. Uh, well, I, I get all that role model stuff, you know, but uh, I'm looking for something a little bit different. Uh, I think the girl needs to be hot. That's really. I love her. Because it's like. You know, I've heard a bunch of people within the organization and, lot, and from a lot of the contestants as well that they want Miss America to have a higher profile and be more visible and more relevant in today's culture. And I know from my job and, you know, from just like living in the world that it's the super beautiful, it's the super sexy that gets booked on the television shows, that gets on the cover of tabloids. And so I think it would be doing the Miss America organization a disservice to not look for the hottest girl. <laughs> while the beauty contest is going on. I've been to Venezuela, I've been a judge in Miss Venezuela, I've been, I mean, this is a lot different. When they told me you're coming to Miss America, I say, oh, I'm going to Vegas, I'm gonna choose the best looking girl over there, the swimsuit competition, I'm so happy. They realize I get here, they put me in a room, and there for 10 hours, asking questions to all these girls, and they tell me it's all about talent. And I go, what's going on? What I got myself into? But really, this is incredible. All these girls are preparing, I mean, extremely well prepared. They could be running for, for a state office or for presidents. They're probably better prepared than most presidents uh, in some countries that I have visited. And I don't want to mention, okay? But they also, to me, they also have to be built good looking. And last night when I saw the girls on stage, there are a lot of things that are not only smart, but are extremely good looking. It's going to be very hard. Uh, for me, I'm looking for someone obviously who's talented, good looking, beautiful, but that's also genuine, real, comfortable in their own skin, not really worried about you know, what others think about them, we just want to go in and help people and, you know, and also serve our country and stuff. Um, 
I'm looking for them to be beautiful as well. And uh, someone who's personable, someone that you can sit down and have a real com conversation with that doesn't kind of have a glaze over her eyes and is so worried about being perfect. Uh, Miss America to me is not going to be the most perfect girl, but the most personable, sweet, funny girl who can be quirky, who can be different, who can, you know, have a conversation with anybody, whether it's a conversation in politics or if it's a conversation about Top 40 radio. Again, I think she should be hip, she should be cool, she should be able to be seen, like, in the most elegant, beautiful gown, you know, walking the red carpet, walking the catwalk, and then you could also see her looking just as elegant and beautiful in sweatpants and sneakers. I want her to be able to be, again, like some of the others said, that's relatable, cool, fun, and, you know, that wants young teenage girls from the ages of, you know, 12 and upwards to be like, I want to be just like her, and then also, you know, older women, you know, respect her and, and um, you know, feel like she's doing a great job for their children. Sir, forgive me for interrupting. Please address From what perspective, Robin? You're the chairman of this 91-year-old... How about this? An, att an attention pot would be an attention grabbing missile of beauty. How about that? Uh, come on. Uh, you know, everybody knows what that means. Brooke, former contestant, right here. Can I direct this to Lara? Because Lara was just saying to me before we came out here that she had some ideas um, about how to update the organization. And Mark also has some ideas. So maybe we can hit the two of them because they both have specifically said this to me before we walked up. So. Yeah. I do think Miss America is relevant. I just think, unfortunately, nobody knows that she's relevant. Um, that's what has to change about this. And we were talking about it behind the scenes. The idea is terrific. I love this idea of a girl who isn't really going for being the most beautiful, but they're, they're applying for this job. It's a year-long job, and we've talked about how hard it is, and we, we grill them in the interview process. But what they're doing is really amazing, and it's, it's very selfless, but nobody knows that because she's not out there. And I think in today's society, you need social media. If, if it means a reality show, Sam, talk to Chris. If it means getting her on the magazines, she has to become a little bit more of a celebrity but also in keeping with the face of Miss America. But right now, it's not about irrelevancy, it's just about, um, she's just MIA. But it's changing, and we're trying to help that by choosing somebody who's a little more current. Oh yeah, I, I agree with that. I definitely feel like she is relevant, and I'm definitely making a turnaround. For me, I think the swimsuit uh, competition, the evening gown, and um, the onstage question and the interviews is uh, you know, great, and that helps us see that they're beautiful, they're in shape, and that they're talented, uh, that they're, uh, you know, good at answering questions and being able to talk about politics and you know, worldly things. For me, the talent round needs to kind of maybe be a little bit more current in such as song choices, um, costuming, um, especially with shows like Dancing with the Stars and So You Think You Can Dance, American Idol. What's great about these shows is that it is inspiring young girls and, and boys even to get into the arts, to want to be able to dance and to feel comfortable about it. But I think there's got to be a new kind of change in music selections of the songs. Um, the way they dress themselves on the stage and kind of, you know, take it out of the 70s and bring it to 2012. You know what I mean? So that, that's kind of what I would, was kind of thinking would be a great way to kind of turn that section around because as far as the politics and the swimsuit and all that, that stuff is amazing. But when you see someone on stage that's hip, cool, talented and doing something that's current, that I definitely feel like that's more inspirational to the younger audience of girls. And also, being a parent, you know, you're hearing all this young social media, the top 40 because you have children of your own, and that's what they're into. So I feel like, you know, it'll be relatable for everybody on a wide spectrum. Yes, sir. Chris, um, normal part of the video, I wanted to know, which of your daughters is the most gravitated towards Advent, or did you uh, disapprove of it, or you know what? None of my girls ever did anything like a pageant that I can remember. You know, maybe when they were, you know, in, in a, like a play or something at school. But um, we always watched Miss America. I grew up watching Miss America, and we've always had it on TV just as a family. So it's always been sort of an American icon to me and my family, my mom, my grandmother, and something that we always look forward to watching. 
But um, had anybody asked me, you bet I would have been right on that bandwagon. Awesome. Uh, let's go back here. And we'll come back to you in a minute, Robin. Okay, we have complicated. Um, we believe in living a healthy lifestyle. Um, and the last year's judges kind of talked about. Um, Just so the judges don't complicate, uh, sponsors the swimsuit competition and gives yes. us the suits. Um, awesome. Uh, did you want to talk about. Would you mind standing up so we can see and hear your beautiful <laughs> face? And thank you so much. Uh, we want to judge you. Hold on, I have to push a button. Judge number five. Judge number five. Hold on. You get it. issue with well, with childhood obesity, of course, um, which has tripled in the last 25 years, but also another escalating issue with uh, eating disorders among women. And so, I mean, we're, we're dealing with, with eating disorders in bo on both ends of the spectrum. And so, I think it's so important that, that Miss America does embody health and fitness, but not just with looks, but she also needs to understand how and why she got there, because this is the message that she's going to be communicating with millions of young women and, and men. Who are going to be looking up to her as a role model? And so she not only does she need to know, um, you know, not only does she need to look good and 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 be the image of that, but she also needs to understand how she got there so she can share that message with everybody. Because this is a, a growing issue in America today, today, and she's going to be one of the main spokespeople for it. We're very health conscious in this country. We're also um, um, so I, I think you need to pick your judge panels better than last year. Obviously, you did a very good job. Excellent job. <laughs> but um, um, because it, it, she she has to, um, as we've said, all, all of us have talked about the fact of embodying these 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 qualities and not just um, and so. It's, uh, it, it's an incredibly relevant, speaking of relevancy, it's an incredibly relevant subject matter in this day and age of, uh, every day in social media of what, how healthy you are and, and, and the, the crises that we're, we're facing as far as health is concerned in America. It's one of, the, one, of the, one of the unhealthiest countries in the world, unfortunately. And so if she's going to represent us, and then we need someone who embodies that. And, and we, I think all of us have focused a great deal on that. And we're very... It was very important to us, and, and um, it was it was important. And I actually thought it was very motivating yeah. last night to see that yeah. competition. I didn't realize how that would affect me. <laughs> yeah. And girl after girl, I was not only entertained, and they were so beautiful, but I started going, "Wow, look at that thigh!" I mean, it was like <laughs> they were like I wanted to go home and just I wanted to go to Chris's room and work out or something. They were so healthy. Yeah. That's, That's the so thing. With his body. They were healthy looking. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 a one Oh yeah, no, I mean, all 53, it was remarkable. You guys were all high-fiving, it was ridiculous. But listen, okay. to me, it's, it's threefold. Number one, it's tradition. 91 years, it's been part of the pageant. America, Miss America's all about tradition. Love talking with former Miss Americas and with Sam about keeping those traditions alive. Uh, number two, it's part of what Miss America needs to be. Um, as Mike would say, hot, but really more than that, Mike, it fit and, and toned and it gets it. And, representing what we want young Merida America to do with their bodies. But but frankly, from from a producer standpoint, I get it. It's fun TV. I'm a woman, and I don't want my daughter to think that she has to flaunt her body. But um, there was never a moment where I felt uncomfortable like that as a woman or a mom. It was good TV. And at the end of the day, you have a broadcast to put on, and we want people to watch. I also feel like um, watching that it shows how hard these women work. At the end of the day, Miss America has to be an all-around hard worker. She has to be able to go out and talk to children. She has to be able to talk about politics. She has to be able to talk about things current. And also, being healthy and being fit and getting in the gym and working on your body to be comfortable and feel comfortable in your own skin is also hard work. And it shows their dedication to fitness, to health, and inspiring you know, younger women and younger individuals. I mean, people watching the show uh, will probably find that inspiring. You know, They'll ask their moms, like, I want to look like that. And that is... Again, going back to what Chris said about childhood obesity, I think this is a really great inspiration for children to want to work out and be athletic and you know get off the couch and you know take care of their bodies and, and feel healthy. To look healthy. Yeah, to feel and look healthy. healthy. And I want to say that besides coming to Miss America, Chris is going to help me to lose uh, the 10 pounds that I need to lose. <laughs> <laughs> I want to learn to do jump, what you did last night. <laughs> 
Well, it starts with the interviews. So we interview the girls and we give them what our internal re you know, reaction is to the information that we've just heard and our feeling about the girls and how they interview. So we judge each girl by exactly what they're doing in like the interview process, the swimsuit process, the talent process. And we judge them on what we think that their score should be, and those scores are put together and out pops a girl. It's like giving birth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that how it's done? And judging, let, yeah. me, let me just, let me just the jump in. The score comes. And then Laura and Terry can, but let me just jump in. The judging um, facilitates the best possible and fair way that each girl can get the points she deserves. And the preliminaries are designed so that each girl is looked at individually in interview, on stage questions, swimsuit, evening gown, and talent. And the judges are instructed, and they're not allowed to talk to each other during the course of the process. Don't start narrowing anything down. Look at every single girl as a potential Miss America and give her the points she deserves in each phase of competition that they're seeing her in. And then their points will start the narrowing down process after the preliminaries are over and tabulated. Yeah, the right. They are presented with the finalists um, after the preliminaries are over. And it's a shock to all of them. Also. No, I'm sure some of them will have 10 of the 15. Some might have 15 of 15. Some might have 7 of the 15. But we don't know. But they don't eight. know. They don't know until it's given to them. We, we, uh, I was just going to say, for example, last night you, you handed us two scholarships. <laughs> I was shocked by both of them, simply because we don't know what each other's scores are. Right. So it was really fun yes. to see who won. See, one of the things that we say you know, to our judges and to our contestants, Miss America is not necessarily the best talent, the best swimsuit, the best evening gown, or the best interview, but she's got to be one of the best in everything. Mm. And one of the things that, that happens in the judging process is that if these seven people who we completely have entrusted the selection of Miss America 2012. If these seven people are all voting for a different girl, number one in swimsuit in the preliminaries, and a different girl, number one in talent, seven talent choices, seven swimsuit choices, I bet you there's a young lady who's going to come second or third on all their ballots, and she might move up to the top spot because she got consistent seconds, even though she didn't get a single first. That's why these judges could be surprised that their number one girl didn't win the preliminary. But it's the total number of points that are given to that young lady that allow her to be the winner of the preliminary, and it's the total number of points at the end of the day that chooses Miss America. Yeah, we don't we don't necessarily narrow down. We we, we you know we judge solely on interview, and that, that was one one of the things that really surprised me last night during the preliminaries was that there was uh, there were a couple of women who did it very very well in the interview and were quite poised and lovely and had interesting answers and. And then, um, and there were women whom, I, you know, I wasn't too sure about, uh, I didn't quite understand, and were very nervous, so I don't understand that. But then last night during the, the swimsuit competition, or the, 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 the evening gown uh, uh, competition, or the talent, shone, just shone, walked out in an evening gown, and I went, wow! And so therefore she got a, a, you know, a, a, a score that she might not have gotten on it. We, in, we, in, we score absolutely individually on each one. So no, it's not, well, I really liked her interview, so I'm going to give her a little bit higher here because, because she's really great at interview. It's no, we must focus solely on that. And that, that's why I really thought there's seven of us. Because if I had to choose one, couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. I, I have going, oh, I want to change that. No, maybe I should have. And, and with all seven of us, and it comes, it just like, Sam said that, that, that she's going to be, she, that woman is going to be within all of our top five in everything, if not, if not at least something. So you're going to get the best all around, Miss America, for sure. How difficult is this? What do you want to do I've never been in anything like this. It's really fun. I, I think it's, difficult is not the right word. Um, it's a joyful process, but it's, it's a responsibility, and that sounds cliche, but we've all really gotten into it because whomever this is, uh, it's a big job, and it's a, and they all want it so badly, and they've worked so hard, and we feel like it's our job to be fair and to not let our first impressions in the interview process then dictate how they looked on the stage. So as Terry was saying, literally, it's like, okay, that's done now. It's she's in a swimsuit, and you know, it's you just have to sort of just be very tunnel visioned 
in each area, and um, and then the chips will fall where they will. And it's and we're not allowed to discuss it with one another, so we can't even like chat about it. Like, and we're, what and about we're all really good about yeah. it. And, as, yeah, as, as head judge, I would say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lair walks around going. Dip, dip, dip. <laughs> now, Katie Stam had a question, and thank you, Robin. Again, you know, Miss America is a role model for so many young women and for so many people across this country. And I think being on our show, which is relevant, relevant today, which is watched by a huge audience, would be another great thing to, um, for the Miss America organization because she'll be touching a lot of people and, um, you know, getting to express some more talent. And that's something we would all like to see happen. So yeah. we'll, we'll talk to you <laughs> right here. Uh, no, I, I judge it how I see it. I mean, it, the same thing on our show. They judge it how they see it, and you give your honest opinion. What I love is that shows like Dancing with the Stars, America's Best Dance Crew, so you can dance and inspire a lot more you know, women and young people to dance. So it's great to see how many people are choosing dance as their talent. I look for mostly confidence. I look for someone that comes out and is owning their performance. Maybe I also look at technique, and I also look at... Um, you know, poise and how they hold themselves, but for the number one thing, I'm looking for confidence. I'm looking for someone that believes in themselves and their performance and is feeling every movement, every part of the music, and someone who is connected to the performance, not someone who's disconnected. So for me, it's all about confidence, owning it, and feeling great about what they're doing, and as long as I can see... I thought it was really nice to see a variety of swimsuits. And um, I like I found myself thinking, what's the next one going to wear? What suit is she going to have on? So it made it interesting for me. And I think when someone can pick a suit that flatters their body, and I speak from experience, <laughs> you feel better about yourself. Yeah. So and they had more confidence. I think it was Absolutely. great instead of just feeling like, okay, throw this on. Like you're a, you know, being able to present who they were, who they felt best as, and being able to be having the ability to present themselves in the way that they feel that they look the best. That, that, was, that was lovely to see. And I think they all did a great job doing that. Any other questions? Come on, Robin, you may have one too. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for your support of the Miss America organization and my sincere thanks to this wonderful panel of judges. Thank you,